All right, for the one dimensional problems that we just finished doing, we got away with direction by a plus or a minus sign. We said up was positive, down was positive, whichever one really made our life a little bit better. That's what we went with. Two dimensional motion, we cannot get away with that. Because how do you indicate up, if up and to the right are both positive, how do you differentiate? And so we go back to what we did in the first chapter with the Splitting up of vectors, we use i hat, j hat. So let's start out with a classic problem. It's going to look a whole lot like the stuff that we have just done. A cliff, a rock is launched at an angle of, what's it, 37 degrees, and launched at 50 meters per second. The rock is going to land on the ground. Well, let's make this 30 meter tall cliff. And earth. There's going to be some problem on the test where it takes place on another planet, and the last couple of years have been pretty explicit. Uh, something like on Mars, and I underline Mars. Now, if you're trying to figure out what's the acceleration of gravity on Mars during the middle of a test, it should be listed on the very first page. If it's not, then you just ask, and I will you can tell from my reaction whether you need it or not. If I go, oh, that means I forgot to put it on there. And if I go, yeah, you want that? Sure, I'll give it to you. That means you probably don't need it, or I'm just messing with your heads. <laughs> Uh, it's 50 meters per second, yes. Note, you can also play with your fellow classmates' heads by coming up and asking for something that you know is not needed so that people look up at the board and go, wait, do we need that somewhere? Or maybe not, that's probably not the right thing to do. So this is a two-dimensional problem. We need to establish i and j directions. So which way do you want i hat to be? All right, I saw someone make a gesture upwards. Which way do you want j hat to be? Uh, no, I'm gonna stop you on that one. It, j hat needs to be perpendicular to it. All right. Traditionally, I hat to the right, J hat is up, but I appreciate the fact that we're doing something different because it doesn't have to be. Now, for those of you who wanted to make I hat at a, an angle like that, not recommended. And I will hopefully remember to tell you why. It will definitely become clear in chapter four, but in chapter three, it deals with the direction of acceleration. <clears throat> so, it is a two-dimensional problem, so basically the stuff that we just did, we're going to be doing twice. We will have our i-hat and our j-hat. And I got my big five right here. And just because it's backwards, so I'm going to write down vert and horiz, just so that I keep, keep it straight. So let's talk about what we know. Oh, what we're trying to find here is this distance here. 
How far from the bottom of the cliff does the rock land? So displacement. Do we know the horizontal or vertical displacement from the beginning to the end? Does the vertical displacement into the 30 meters? No. Darn close. close. Oh, no, negative 30. Yes. 30 it starts here, it ends up down here. In from the beginning to the end, it drops down 30 meters. So my vertical, negative 30 meters. Horizontally. That's what we're trying to find out. Yes. It's R. We're going to come back to the velocity. Acceleration. Once the rock is in the air, or whatever the projectile is, once it is in the air, what are all the forces acting on it once it is in the air? And I know we haven't talked about forces, but I think people have a <clears throat> general idea of what's acting on the rock. Gravity. Okay. The wind. We will mercifully ignore the wind. Okay. <laughs> And as far as gravity is an answer, uh, I, I understand what you mean. Um, when we get to chapter four, I'm going to nitpick that one. But uh, yeah, weight, the weight of the object. Force due to gravity, gravitational force. Which way does that act on it? Yeah, down. It's all vertical. There is no horizontal acceleration at all. So horizontally, my acceleration is zero <clears throat> meters per second squared. And this is why you don't want to put I hat or J hat at a strange angle here. It is most convenient to make I hat one of those either parallel or anti-parallel to the acceleration. Anti-parallel, just opposite direction. So when Amy said up to be I hat, she was establishing it anti-parallel to acceleration due to gravity. Perfectly fine. Down would have been the other choice. So up, down, left, right on these type problems. Chapter four is when we get into stranger angles. My acceleration vertically then, we just went through this. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Yep. It's negative because it's down, and 9.8 meters per second squared because it's Earth. And we are not so far above. If you're 200 kilometers above the Earth's surface, then yeah, don't use 9.8, but if you're right there, 9.8. There's one other bit of information given in the problem. Because remember, I need to know three things in order to get all five. My initial velocity. Now, what I the initial velocity that I gave you in polar form, I gave it to you in polar form, 50 meters per second, 37 degrees. That is my initial velocity. But I need to break it down into horizontal and vertical components. How much of that is to the right? How much of that is up? And so this gets into what we did that second day. My hypotenuse is 50 meters per second. And I got my components there. This angle here is 37 degrees. So, and it's a right triangle because those are perpendicular to each other. So how do I find the two sides?
cosine. All right, which one is going to involve sine and which one's going to involve cosine? <clears throat> cosine would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, and then for cosine it would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Which one's the opposite, which one's the adjacent? Um, to the right of the opposite. All right, so this is the one that's going to involve sine. So this will be 50 meters per second times the sine of 37 degrees, which is approximately 30 meters per second. This will involve the cosine, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 37 degrees, and this is approximately 40 meters per second. Three, four, five triangle has one of its angles as just under 37 degrees. Yeah, quite a good. If you use your calculator, I mean, no, 37 degrees will be just slightly a bit more than 40. The other one will be slightly less than 30, I believe. So, uh, or other way? Yeah, other way. This will be slightly less than 40 and slightly more than 30. But for the sake of ease, I'm just going to go with the 3, 4, 5 triangle. So my initial horizontal velocity, 40 meters per second to the right. To the right was positive j hat. So this is 40 meters per second. This one, 30 meters per second. <clears throat> so far, this it looks like all I've done is I created two different problems out of the initial problem, and that is true. But there is something that binds the two. There's something that is the same value for both of them, and that is time. It is going to be in the air vertically for the exact same amount of time as it's in the air horizontally. So we need to find time from one side or the other's pieces of information. And am I going to use the vertical information to find time or the horizontal information to find time? Um, yeah, we only can use one of the horizontal. We only know two pieces of information horizontally, so it's not really going to help us. We have to use the vertical. Which equation am I going to use? Sorry, which equation are we going to use? The, the one we used earlier, the sort of quadratic, uh, quadratic, right? All right, so delta S equals VIT plus one half AT squared. I think that's the one you're talking about? Yeah, that's the one. The biggest mistake I see students make at this point is they suddenly start mixing and matching. I'm plugging in the vertical information into it or the horizontal. I am not plugging in both of them. I'm not plugging in the initial 50. <clears throat> my vertical, my I hat equation. So I have negative 30 equals 30t plus one half negative 9.8t squared. So 4.9t squared minus 30t minus 30 equals 0. So basically that's 4.9 right there, negative 4.9, and then I flip that over on the left-hand side, the 30t to the left-hand side, so the signs change. Before we proceed, a couple questions I want you to ask yourself. 
is this a physically viable problem? Is it possible I can stand on top of a cliff, throw an object with some speed so that it lands somewhere from the bottom of the cliff? Yes. Uh, so, yeah. I, if, so if I get a negative under the radical, that would mean I made a mistake somewhere because this should happen. <coughs> Am I going to get two positive times, or a positive and negative time, or two negative times? Positive and negative. And between the positive and the negative, which one will have a greater absolute value? So I get a positive and a negative. That is true. Because the math problem looks at the entire parabola, so it's finding the time here and the time here. <coughs> Will the, so the positive time, the negative time, which one will have a greater absolute value? Positive. Yep. <coughs> because we're throwing it up initially. We're throwing it down initially. So by throwing it that way, then the parabola looks like that. And we go much farther in the past to get to the same position. All right, so right off the bat, we're gonna get a positive negative answer. The positive number should have a greater absolute value. Let's find out if it works. I'm about to go off the board there again, so <clears throat> let's backtrack. So times is going to be 30 plus or minus the square root of 900 minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 30 divided by 2 times 4.9. This long silence, <clears throat> try that again. <clears throat> this long silence is while people are doing their calculator work and they're about to tell me an answer. Yes, what do you got? So, 6.99. 6.99? Yeah, let's keep it at 6.99. I'm not worried about significant figures. Anyone else got 6199? All right, we got two other people at least. Point eight seven. Two answers, and indeed, the positive one has a greater absolute value. Six point nine nine seconds. Six point nine nine seconds. That's the one value that will automatically be the same for both. And I tried to think: Are there any exceptions in physics? Because there's not a lot of times in physics that you really can get away with saying always. Uh, I have not thought of an exception. Even when you get into the quantum physics, where things get a little bit bizarre, uh, I don't. I think it would still. The times would have to be the same. So now we need to find the actual answer to the problem.
What equation do I use to find R? except I don't know VF. I want to come back to that one though. I'm going to make a little note over here. We're solving for displacement. We don't know the final. Is it the same formula we just used? Yep. So, this was vertical right here, vertical. Now horizontal. We have R equals 40 times 6.99 plus zero. Since acceleration is zero. most frustrating mistake I see is the students get this far, they break it up into the parts, they then come over here, they realize this is the equation to use, and then they start plugging into the equation, they plug in negative 30 because that's the displacement, they plug in negative 9.8 for the acceleration, and then for the initial velocity, they put in 50. You have now mixed vertical and strange angle in the same equation. Do not do that. I've gotten to the point where you've got vertical, vertical, 37 degree angle information. Uh, at that point, I, I'm done with giving partial credit for that. The other thing is vertical, vertical, and then put zero in for acceleration, which is horizontal acceleration. Don't do that. The vertical stay together, the horizontal stay together. All right, so let me amend one comment I made earlier that if you know three, you can find all five. Uh, here's an exception to it. If we use the first equation, we can actually solve for VF here. So VF is equal to VI plus AT. So VF is equal to 40 plus zero times time. So that's equal to 40 meters per second. The acceleration is zero, which means my velocity in that direction is constant. My velocity stays the same. Didn't have to, have to do the math if you think of it conceptually. This is a situation where I have an acceleration being zero. It, I know three things, I cannot find the other two if acceleration is zero. Because over here, that would drop out. So, the exception. <clears throat> Questions at the moment? Now, to give you some idea about how my mind works when I'm ready to test, first off, I start with one of the old tests. I don't know which one it is. I basically, I've got them in a file folder, and I just close my eyes, and I move the cursor up and down, and I click, and that's my starting point. I then take that test. I highlight the whole thing in yellow so I know what the original test was. I go through each problem, and I go, I really like that problem. Let me do a slight variation of that. 
oh, that was a horrible problem. Let me just throw that one out. I was watching something on TV last night, which inspired me for a problem. So let me put something new in. That's basically how I go about writing my tests. I'm going to get to the projectile motion problem because there will be a projectile motion problem on the first test. And I'm going, man, we have done that out the wazoo. <clears throat> this is a problem that every person should know. Cold, be able to do a, I'm throwing something at an angle. The steps that we just went through, everyone should be able to do that by the time you get to the test. So let me come up with something different. Maybe I give you R and ask you to find the height. Maybe I give you 50 meters per second, but you have to tell me the angle. Can I tell you R? You have to tell me the angle. So I give you a piece of information that is not there and ask you to find something different. So we're going to do a big leap here. We're not going to finish it today because we just have a couple minutes, but I'm going to set up the hardest projectile motion problem just so you see what the hardest one looks like. So whatever's on the test can be somewhere between this and what we're about to do. Let's make this 60 meters. And I want us to find the angle. And just to make sure that we don't run into an issue here, uh, I'm going to crank this up to 90 meters per second. Because I do want there to be a solution. It is possible that at 50 meters per second, it might not make it. I, I don't know. So what do we know? The horizontal displacement is 60 meters. Positive or negative? Positive. Yep. Vertical displacement can be negative. We know accelerations. Yeah. Uh, negative nine point eight. Horizontal or vertical? Uh, horizontal. Negative nine point eight. Horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah. Horizontal. Horizontal. What you're saying is Craig's wrong. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horizontal is zero meters per second squared. Yeah. <clears throat> Vertical. Negative. There we go. That's the, that's the magic thing I was looking for. And then the units meters per second squared. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And why? Because Amy said up was positive. But for the turn of the hand, we would have a different number there. All right, that's the, that's, those are the numbers that we know concretely. The initial velocity, we know what the initial speed is. We don't know what the velocity is broken up, but we can break it up because the horizontal is the adjacent side. That's the cosine. So this is going to be 90 meters per second times the cosine of theta. And this is 90 meters per second times the sine of theta. Because I gave you the angle next to the horizontal. This is the way it breaks up. <clears throat> so 
We are still going to use this equation here. And so what we're going to end up with is uh, delta S. So I've got using the vertical, I got negative 30 is equal to 90 sine theta times time minus 4.9 T squared. I have an equation with two unknowns. This is not solvable by itself. However, the horizontal, we have 60 is equal to 90 cosine of theta times time plus zero, because the acceleration is zero. I now have two equations, two unknowns. This is now solvable. It is not easily solvable, but it is solvable. And that is the cliffhanger. And so next Thursday, we'll actually go through the, the joy and the beauty of the drink. And you will all feel better about society and the world in general. It's a hoop. And I'm going to stop this.